ago, I was in New York City. It was a dark Saturday afternoon. The minute black woman came up, the only question I heard from her was, you Martin Luther King? And I said, yes. The next minute, I felt something beating on my chest. Before I knew it, I had been stabbed by this demented woman. That blade had gone through and the x-rays revealed. The tip of the blade was on the edge of my aorta, the main artery. And once that's punctured, you're drowned in your own blood. That's the end of it. It came out in the New York Times the next morning that if I had merely sneezed, I would have died. Did it. Coach's dad was a doctor. Not only was Coach's dad was, was a doctor, and I want you to talk about this a little bit, uh, Coach. Coach's dad was the Martin Luther King actually got, when he came to Harlem uh, in the 60s, somebody tried to kill him. And somebody tried to stab him, uh, if you guys look at the history, um, and um, in the heart. And Coach, was your, did your dad work on Dr. King? Was it, was that, am I right? Well, my father, may he rest in peace, he was a heart and lung surgeon. He devised how to put the pacemakers in. And he was one of the few white people that would go to Harlem in the 50s. It was September 20th, 1958, when arguably the greatest American, Dr. Martin Luther King, got stabbed at a book signing at a, a bookstore, at a, at a department store that now, uh, it's ironic, is now Turo College of Medicine in Harlem. The night, which was an actual letter opener, was touching his aorta. Now, usually when you get uh. stabbed in the chest, two things happen. You get stabbed in the chest, it's not touching the heart, penetrating the heart, you're okay. If it penetrates the heart, that's it. You drown in your own blood, which Dr. King said in his own speech. This was actually like a knife touching a balloon. If Dr. King would have sneezed or coughed, the knife penetrates his aorta, he drowns in his own blood. It was too dangerous for my father to touch the chest because that sensation could cause the coughing and the sneezing. Time was of the essence. He quickly removed two ribs from the side, got in, got the knife out and saved his life. The next morning, he got up very early to change Dr. King's dressing to make sure that no infection would start, which would add to a lot of problems. Uh, paparazzi came in, took the picture. That picture went viral. It was gonna take Dr. King approximately three months to be 100% healthy again. Three months later, three and a half months later, my father gets a beautiful letter from Dr. King it's on his stationary letterhead. I'd, I'd like to read it. It's uh, dated January 6, 1959. Dear Dr. Naclerio, ever since leaving New York, I have been intending to write you at least a note to express my great appreciation to you for all that you did to preserve my life. Your skill surgery, coupled with your genuine concern to me as a patient, combined to bring me from a very low ebb in my life to blooming health again. Please know that I will remember your gestures of goodwill so long as the cords of memory shall lengthen. I hope you have received our gift by now. It is simply a little way to express our gratitude to you for all that you did to ease the load of a different, difficult period in our lives. With best wishes to you and yours for health and happiness in 1959, I am sincerely yours, Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, okay. This letter... Anybody wants a copy, get a hold of me. I love to brag about this. Uh, my father became very good friends with Martin Luther King for the remaining 10 years. Uh, when my father went to Atlanta to give speeches on Montgomery, he would call on Dr. King. He got very tight with Daddy King, uh, the Martin Luther King's father. I have a beautiful autograph book from Daddy King. Uh, I actually met Martin Luther King a couple of times when I was young, but I am so proud of that historical moment and, you know, it brings the tears to my eye because whenever yeah. I hear Dr. Martin Luther King, I also think of my father. 